Hi everyone, my name is Adam from CAD Dimensions, and by now everyone is aware of the coronavirus situation and how it is impacting doctors, nurses, and medical staff all over the world. And if you follow 3D printing at all, you know that 3D printing is being used to fill a need by making PPE, and it's kind of awesome. We've actually been able to step up and help this effort by 3D printing face shields for local hospitals. We've been running every printer in our Syracuse lab around the clock for the past few weeks. And on top of that, we've had a ton of local businesses and our local library reach out and offer to print the face shields on their printers. It's been an awesome community building project and we are aiming to collect and donate 1,000 face shields. And as of recording this, we've already done that. But I couldn't help but wonder, how did we actually get into this mess? Like, why is there such a shortage of medical PPE right now? Obviously, COVID-19 is very contagious, so as more people were infected, more PPE was needed. But, at least to my knowledge, most of the protective equipment that medical professionals use is disposable. After working with a patient, it just gets thrown away. But I would argue that there's a bigger picture here behind this PPE shortage that affects every business, not just companies that make gloves and face masks. The bigger picture is all about supply chain. China is essentially the manufacturing center for the entire world. In fact, in 2018, China alone accounted for 28% of the global manufacturing output. When the number of infections in China started rising, they really had no choice except to shut down a lot of their businesses to protect their people. And as the virus spread around the world, we've seen other countries, including our own, do the exact same thing. Now, in theory, you could protect your business from this problem in the future by establishing a massive network of suppliers all around the world. But I would argue that that strategy isn't really feasible. There are a lot of parts that just aren't made affordably in every country. So how does 3D printing fit into all of this? Well, the reason 3D printers were able to quickly step up and start making medical face shields is because they're able to make a ton of different parts without making any tooling. Compared to injection molding, it's way more flexible. One day you can be making face shields and the next you can be making cat toys. Now, it's not as fast as injection molding, but when there's a sudden break in your supply chain, 3D printing can step in because of how flexible it is to fill that gap. That is exactly what we saw as companies with injection molding capabilities were eventually able to step up and start also making face shields, but it took them weeks to make a mold and I'm guessing that they had to drop what they were normally doing in order to be able to pull that off. There you have it, 3D printing is one way that you can protect your supply chain. Unlike conventional fabrication methods, 3D printing is a lot more flexible. That means that it can make the parts that you need when you need them without needing any special tooling to be made. An article on 3dprint.com expands on this idea of flexibility. They broke it down not only into flexibility of what parts you're making, but also flexibility on where the parts are made and in what volumes. They stated, if business leaders in manufacturing reduce their dependency on geography, create manufacturing infrastructure that is less dependent on specific levels of production, and increase their ability to respond quickly, then they will reduce their manufacturing risk, be able to respond to the next crisis, and be more prepared to take advantage of future opportunities. Now a lot of you might be thinking, this is nice, but 3D printed parts won't work for my application. You might think that the materials aren't right, or maybe the parts aren't strong enough, etc. Based on the urgency of the situation, organizations everywhere are accelerating their process for qualifying 3D printed parts. Probably the best example of this is the National Institute of Health. They started accepting design submissions for medical PPE, and then tested and approved some of them for clinical use very quickly. We'll make sure to link to the NHS website, but there's also a really interesting TCT article that discusses whether or not 3D printing could be the quote-unquote magic bullet for COVID-affected supply chains. If a large authority like the National Institute of Health can accelerate their qualification process, what's stopping you? Now might be a really good time to really start evaluating 3D printing. 
Obviously, we can all hope that nothing like this ever happens again, but maybe the next disaster is an earthquake, or a war, or something else entirely. We can't predict the future, we can only try to be as prepared as possible so that we can all do what's best for ourselves, our families, and our businesses. Stay safe, please follow whatever the current recommendations are to help stop the spread, and thank you for watching.